Jehovah Rafi, the Lord God who heals, is here with you today and is willing to heal all of your sickness and disease. I'm Angela Madden. I'm here with Corey. Today, Corey, is going to be a phenomenal program. It really is. It's going to be great. We have an incredible special guest. I like to call him my TV dad. <laughs> but we have to hear today Tim Bergen, who is not a stranger to Cornerstone Television. He is a pivotal and has always been a pivotal component component to Cornerstone Television, and we get to hear a special interview with him today. And you know, Corey, I love that we're getting to talk with him because yeah. he does have such rich history, yeah. and you are going to learn how the Lord impacts your daily life today. We're also going to be reminded that God still performs miracles, and also we'll be announcing the winner of yesterday's Stump the Viewer contest. So stay tuned to find out if you are the winner of this fabulous prize pack. It's going to be a beautiful program, and I feel like believers more now than ever, and always have, need that sense of encouragement to know that the miracle-working God is still moving Absolutely. today. Absolutely. And it's important for people to know that God is, he is interwoven into all of the fabric of your life. Not just a moment, not just the big things. And I think that's something that I used to struggle with is feeling like God doesn't care about those things. I'm not going to ask him or talk to him about those things. But if he is able to understand the number of hairs that are on our head, on. and I get a haircut all the time. And so that means that the numbers are changing, the yes. different things, follicles are changing, getting a little bit of gray hairs. <laughs> I think it's the kids, right? The little stress. Boop. I call it wisdom. My daughter's <laughs> name is wisdom, right? Uh, but he is so acquainted with our going in and our coming out. So he knows from you losing your shoe to your keys to one of the big surgeries and things that Tim's gonna talk about later, God is acquainted with our struggles and he is ready and willing to heal us. Yeah, I love that you brought that up, Corey, because God is concerned about the little itty bitty things and he's concerned about the ginormous things. He is the God who is with us. He he is Emmanuel, and we're going to get to hear all about what he's doing in Tim's life today. Yes, yes. and that's why having a powerful, intimate relationship with God is so important because when you love someone, you love them in the details, and God loves us in our details. And you think, how could you care so much about me when all these billions of people are here? That's why God is who he is and we're not. Listen, don't go away. We'll be joined by Tim Bergen when we return. Plus, find out if you are this week's winner of Stump the Viewer. We'll be right back. When we think of the New Testament disciples, it's easy to idealize their walk with God, but they were just like you and me. They needed a great deal of help to stay on the right path. We're excited to announce that Tom Hollis has a new devotional coming out this June. Spirit Walk follows the apostles as they attempt to follow Christ, as reflected through the book of Acts. Their experiences can be ours as well. All we need to do is follow the Spirit. Enjoy 40 short devotional entries and discover how the journey of the apostles relates to us today. Spirit Walk includes a daily verse, prayer, and space to journal your personal reflections. Be among the first to receive Tom's devotional, which releases June 12th. Ask for your copy of Spirit Walk when you give today. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for your generosity. Hope happens here. Welcome back to Hope Today. In case you missed yesterday's program, we had a Stump the Viewer question for you, the audience. Let's check out what yesterday's question was. Paul tells the Ephesians to walk in goodness, righteousness, and truth as children of what? Here were your choices. A, obedience, B, light, C, thanksgiving, or D, Abraham. Corey, would you like to guess the answer? I believe that it is light. Okay, let's mm -hmm. see. Yes, you are right. <laughs> the answer is B, light. Okay, let's see how many of you got it right. 83% of you did. Good job, everyone. Proud of you with that Bible knowledge. <laughs> let's find out who won the um, the audience contribution. Who gets the prize package? So let's get the drum roll going, please. This week's winner is... Lorene Peters. 
Congrats, Lorene. You are the winner of this great prize pack that includes the book gift of the month and this Cornerstone TV t-shirt. Way to go, Lorene. <laughs> Wear your shirt proud and read that book. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Listen, congratulations. Listen, if you have been an avid Cornerstone television viewer over the last few decades, you're quite probably quite familiar with uh, the, uh, the, that show, which I used to be on, that I was so blessed to be a part of, and it was called His Place. And if you remember it, you most likely will remember who our next guest is as well. He was the host of His Place, and I still like to call him my TV dad, Tim Bergen. Tim, welcome to Hope Today. Oh, it's good to be with the two of you. It's uh, a, great, a great time. I spent half of my life here. In, wow. in this place. So, yeah, it's 32 years working for Cornerstone Television, wow. and uh, it was such a joy, such a blessing to be a part of the family. Wow. Now, and I have so, to ask you, do you miss it? Yeah, I, I do in, in some ways, but, you know, but, uh, God doesn't stop. You know, he, there's no such thing as retirement in the kingdom. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when I left here, I went, I left to uh, pastor the church in Ross River Township, the Christian Center, yeah. and I'm um, still, you know, 60, 70 hours a week there, plus we've got an outreach with a coffee shop and, and uh, the full potential project in, in the city of Manessa. And, and God just still on the move, right. on, still on the move, uh, which, you know, uh, which kind of messed me up when, when I found out I, I had a little bit of a health crisis yeah, yeah, that I didn't that. have. Well, uh, uh, things like, uh, just kind of taking a step back, my cholesterol levels are normal. Uh, I didn't have any shortness of breath. I didn't have any um, any kind of heart pain or anything like that. I'm, I, like I said, I'm working 60 or 70 hours a week between the ministry at the church and the ministry at, at uh, his place and the, the uh, full potential project. Plus my daughter bought a house and I'm remodeling her house, wow. you know, hanging drywall and, and uh, vaulting a ceiling and running electric and all the things that, that you do. And so I was, I was feeling fine. But I just felt, and, and I don't want people to think this is spooky, but, but I really felt from the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that I needed to go get a stress test done. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was funny was the, 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 my insurance company denied me getting a stress test. They said, mm -hmm. you know, all, all your markers are good. You're, you know, you're healthy. Why in the world, you know, should we give you a stress test because you're, you know, you're healthy? Right. Well, my, my PCP pushed. I ended up getting one, and that's when they found, I passed the stress test with flying colors, but they found a little anomaly. Wow. And then when I went in for a heart catheterization because of that, um, they found that I had, at that point, uh, four arteries that were blocked. And, and then when then, uh, they scheduled two weeks later for me to have a bypass, and I ended up having six six bypasses, wow. which is, you know, which is incredible, incredible. And, uh, but I, I just want to, you know, encourage people mm. that, you know, God, when we're listening to the Holy Spirit, the scripture mm. tells us that he leads us and he guides us into all truth, mm. that, that he is the one that is always talking to us. Jesus, when Jesus went to the cross, he went to the cross to, so that he could shed his blood for our salvation. Mm -hmm. He went to the cross so that the enemy would be defeated. Mm -hmm. And he went to the cross so that the Holy Spirit could be released. Mm -hmm. And as Christians, we need to grab onto that yeah. and, and allow and be sensitive mm -hmm. to the Holy Spirit because he can literally save our lives. Uh, you know, the doctor told me I'd basically be dead in a year if I hadn't had this done, if I hadn't, wow. if I hadn't gone, wow. because there was so much blockage there that I had no clue. I had no wow. clue. And a lot of men my age, uh, you know, uh, need to get that done. They need yeah. to get that taken care of yeah. in a very practical wow. way. Did they share with you um, how it started, how it began to progress from well, where see, it was? See, the thing is, that's the thing. My, my, uh, uh, my cholesterol levels were all good. Yeah. There was no, you know, no problems there. Um, you know, I've, I've got a genetic issue. It's not the way that I eat. Mm -hmm. um, I eat pretty clean, pretty healthy. And uh, so it's not the way that I eat. I just have a genetic predisposition mm -hmm. for developing plaque in my arteries. And so I did that. But the good thing is, you know, I had 64 years of, of these pipes yeah. and now I got new pipes in. So I'm expecting <laughs> another 64 years <laughs> so I can keep doing all the stuff that God, God wants us to do. And, wow. and, and see, that's the, the, the key thing is that I, I really believe that God wants us to accomplish the task. I, I often said into my church, you know, the scripture says, you know, uh, we'll get to heaven and, and Jesus will say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And, and I've said, and, and, and please, I, I don't mean this in a disrespectful way at all. I don't want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want to hear, Tim, you did everything I asked you to do. Yeah. I want to hear those words that, that I didn't miss a beat in, in what he wanted because there's so much 
our world right now, our world is so broken and so hurting. We've never been more divided in this nation. We've never been, there's never been more hopelessness in this nation. There's never been a time where, where people have stopped going to church and, and there, there are more nuns, you know, when they check the list off of where, you know, who, you know, what is your faith belief? And there's more nuns now that they have no faith belief. And, and to me, that's, that's part, you know, that's really the church's fault that we need to have that, you know, to, to use my physical example as we need to have a new heart as, mm. as Revelation chapter two talks about. Mm. And that new heart is not being afraid, mm. not, not yeah. being pessimistic, not being hopeless, not remembering that God is really in control and he is amazing yeah. and he loves us. When I, I say in my church all the time, I say, you know, you're the one that God loves the most. And people have a hard time with that because of, how can, how can God love Corey the most? How can God love Angela the most? Right. How can God love Tim the most? Well, he's God. He can, yeah. he can love us all the most. Yeah. And he knows us personally. You, you mentioned at the beginning of the program about knowing the numbers of hairs on your head. He knows us personally and intimately yeah. and he loves us in that way. And he wants us to grasp on to that relationship and say, wow, this is, you know, you love me. Guess what? I'm going to open every door for you that needs to be opened. Wow. I mean, we, uh, you know, I, I sorry. I, I'm used to doing this, so I'm sorry. I, you know, no, I, I, you I, I, flow. You <laughs> flow. I'm just enjoying hearing you talk. <laughs> Not letting you guys ask any questions. But, but, yeah. but it, you know, it, it, that's what pushed me yeah. uh, to do the, you know, I, I talked with uh, the board here and Steve Johnson uh, about getting the name His Place mm. uh, because I wanted to, I, I saw the impact that the show had. Mm for so many years. And, and uh, by the way, just as a little promo, uh, the show's going to be airing uh, from 1.30 uh, a.m. to 3 a.m. in the months of June and July. So you know, the, the, the old shows, <laughs> the, old the old shows, shows back. I, wow. they, thank goodness they don't, they don't go back so far as when I had hair. <laughs> but, but, uh, you know, but, right. but, but the show is the show is so impactful and and uh, in so many stations uh, across the country and and i don't know how many how many shows we we did but i i know at one point i, I i've hosted over 5000 television programs and wow. and we had the we had the opportunity to do that and it worked as a show yeah. and i thought you know as a church could we do the same thing could we start uh, a his place coffee shop that would really work, and that and it has worked. We've we've got um, you know we have people coming through uh, the coffee shop every day. We're open Monday through Saturday, and we've got people coming through. and And the purpose is it's a, it's part of the nonprofit overall, the full potential project. But but uh, we bought this building in in Manesson and and uh, it's it yeah there's that's the inside of the coffee shop there. Mm -hmm. uh, we bought this building in Manesson. We turned the the old fire station part yeah. of it. Uh, into the, the coffee shop and you can see those garage doors are where the where the fire station used to uh, the fire trucks used to go into and uh, we just had a it has worked because we found that people do want to talk about God mm. they want to talk about a relationship with Jesus they they don't know they don't want religion mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they want Jesus mm -hmm. but when you explain to them who Jesus is mm -hmm. then the idea of religion becomes more palatable mm -hmm. to them because religion is what we need to kind of hold everything together. We need yeah. those traditions. We need those mm -hmm. things that help us to hold things together. But the idea of, of being able to just talk about Jesus as someone that really loves them, yeah. that, that can deal with their problems, deal with their hurts yeah. and help them to see the reality of who God is. Yeah. Um, it, it makes a difference. It yeah. makes an impact and people receive it. Wow. They receive it. And it's, it's just been an incredible journey for us. Wow. Listen, I got to spend some time at his place. It is a beautiful, comfortable space. Well, I, I think... wanted to do something that mm -hmm. would be, I, it, it's in the city of Manesson, yeah. and I wanted it to look like it belonged in Shadyside or the uh, South Side uh -huh. or Lawrenceville, yeah. right, in, in all seriousness. All my favorite places. Those people that are familiar with, <laughs> familiar with uh, Pittsburgh area. Yeah. So. Listen, and, and just to, uh, to, to encourage viewers, listen, if you haven't seen his place, I used to act on his place with Tim years ago. Tim was an actor. He's the main host. But listen, we have a clip. Take a look at this. What is it that you really like to do? I mean, you're bouncing around here. What, what is it that you like to do? I want to make money. I mean, I want to make money and I want to be on TV and I want to do it. And if I can do it at the same time, doing that show, whatever. So you don't care what you do. You, you just want to, whatever it takes, you can be, you can be somebody's servant full time. That's what you're looking for? Uh, Marcus, listen, give me a minute here, okay? Listen, you, you, you have some kind of church background. 
I, I know that. And, you know, because talk to Lottie and, and she loves the Lord and things like that. God has created every one of us special. We're all given these unique gifts, skills, talents, and abilities. So the Bible writes it this way. It says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Acknowledge him in all of your ways, and he'll make it best right. In other words, he says, listen, I have created you so special with such unique gifts that if you just trust me, if you follow me, I'll fulfill your destiny the way I created you. Rather than you needing to jump around and jump around. Listen, if all you're looking for is the buck, you can, you can make money a lot of different ways and be miserable. But God created you to fulfill your joy and to become who you are uniquely designed to be. And I, you know what? I don't think, really, it's a butler. Oh, well. Well, I shall introduce the music. He shan't be waited on any longer. He must make his music last. So, good day. Good day. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> I, I honestly don't think he listened to a word I said. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. What an incredible memory. <laughs> <laughs> what an incredible memory. Listen, you can catch re-airings of his place beginning June 3rd, weeknights from 1.30 a.m. to 3 a.m. Wow, what a flashback. What, what a flashback. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? I used to have such a good time. Well, we had fun. We it had fun, fun with the show and, and taking it. Uh, one of the things that happened, there was a popular radio host here in Pittsburgh that, that uh, when he first came on the show, we didn't always have Christians on the show. We had mm -hmm. uh, non-Christians on the show. Right. And he wasn't a Christian. And when he first came on the show, what, what we would do is we would gather around in a circle and we would pray together. Mm -hmm. The first time that, that he saw this happen, he laughed mm -hmm. through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Just very like, you know, you stupid people, why are you, right. why are you doing this? But we right. still had him on the show. And, and then the next time he joined in with us mm. and then he developed uh, a type of cancer. Mm. And guess what? When he developed that cancer, he found my phone number and he called me mm. and, and uh, we, we developed a, a conversation, a relationship mm. where I would call him and talk to him every month. This was at, well after the show was done. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the impact that that program had because it, it, it broke people's guard down. Mm -hmm. It made them feel like okay, I'm not dealing with a religious person here. I'm dealing yeah. with a real person yeah. that just has something that I wish I had. Yeah. And, and when we can live that life before people, you know, God will use us to change the world. And, and you know, I've, I've been in 100 countries around the world. Uh, my life has been threatened uh, numerous times. I've been shot at, been held up at knife point, uh, been surrounded by terrorists. And, and God has protected me through it all. And it's not because I'm somebody special. It's just a point of God wants his people to just be so focused on him that, that they can be about his business and not worry about anything else. Yes. Know that, you know, I, it, once again, I went through this major surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, it was much worse than what they thought, but God preserved my life. Why, because I'm special? No, because God has a plan and, and a purpose for every person. And he wants them, just like the clip said, yeah. he wants to fulfill that plan yeah. and, and use us in a way that we can touch people. And, and he's asking us, I believe, to have a new heart, mm -hmm. to just stop worrying, Ooh. stop being afraid, Ooh. stop stop being uh, so focused on so many other things, yeah. putting these other things uh, ahead of who he is, but to remember that, that he really is God and that when we trust him, he fulfills all this stuff. He takes care. What, what is it that you want? What, what, well, those are things that God put in your heart. He, he desires for you to have that happen. So if he put them there, then he's going to fulfill them. So why are you worried about it? Why are you freaking out? Why are you so bad out of shape? Let, let God be God. And, and that's uh, the new heart, I believe, that God wants to put in all of us. What a word. I, that's definitely a series. I hope you're getting ready to teach a series about what you just went through. Because I feel well, the I, Lord speaking to you. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to do something. This Sunday will be my first Sunday back. You know, I just had the surgery a month ago. Yeah, right. So, you know, <laughs> so, too much right so now, you yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm not trying, you know, uh, Robin, who, who I've worked with forever, I, I love her dearly. She's, yeah. she's the production manager here now at, at CTV. She scheduled me to do a few promos. I'm like, Robin, I just had the surgery a month ago. You want me to have a heart attack to do, do all these promos and things? Oh, and, and, but, but I am going to share this will be my first Sunday back. Yeah. And we have our, our uh, blessing of the bikes this week and everything oh, else. And so, so we're, we're doing all that. But, but um, I'm working through, actually working through the book of John hmm. because I, I felt that our church needed to remember really who Jesus is. Yeah. 
And the book of John does that in such a wonderful way uh, to, to bring life and hope. I keep, I keep hearing this as you're talking that, that you're so connected to the pulse of God and his presence. Mm -hmm. And you've always been that one. And I, I feel that, you know, as kingdom ambassadors, you know, God wants to speak to many of us concerning his plans. And you've always allowed yourself to be open to the plan of God in your life. And, and m many people, even just like that clip here, I was playing a character in Marcus worried about money. And I think a lot of people today are struggling with finances. They're struggling with so many things. Oh, yeah. And just even being connected to social media and TikTok and Instagram and, and Twitter and LinkedIn, all of these things make us driven after our own successes. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said something to me the other day. He said, don't let success become an idol. Mm -hmm. And even, even that can even be the successes after, I want to do things for God. Mm -hmm. I want to serve mm -hmm. the Lord. And God said, listen, one part of Jesus' ministry that I feel people neglect is the part where he kept disappearing. <laughs> See, if, we, if, if we could just grasp, um, you know, social media does have such a major impact and, and it can be used for good. Yes. It can be very well used for good. But if we spend as much time with the Lord as we spend on social media, Ooh. the church would be a uh, dramatically different thing. And when I say church, I mean the whole church. And, and I've seen God uh, move in such powerful ways in people's lives mm -hmm. when they just make that decision. Yeah. And it's, there are lots of good things yeah. that get in the way yeah. of the greatness that God has for us. Wow. Say that again. So there's lots of good things good. that get in the way of the greatness that God has wow. for us. And, and we, can, we can settle for those good things. Mm. And we settle for the scraps from the table mm. when, when God is saying, you know what? I want to see the world changed wow. and I want to use you to change the world. And, and what happens when we decide that we're going to do that, God fulfills us. Yes. And then there's a peace. See, it's not about position. It's not about authority. It's not about what you do. It's, you know, uh, the city of Manesson is, to be perfectly honest, the last place mm. I wanted to go to, to minister. Wow. Um, I have bad memories as a kid of being mm. in, in that city. And so I didn't want to go there, but God sent me there and he's bringing us great success in the hearts and lives of people. And, and that city has changed because we've been there. Yeah. And I believe that that's what God has called the church to do, yeah. to change whole cities, to change whole regions, wow. to bring hope where there is no hope. Yeah. Because we have the only message. Yeah. We have the only hope. We're the, we're the only ones with the answer. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't care what anybody else says or does. We're the only, one, only wow. ones with the answer. Wow. So I... Going through this experience, I've heard people when they go through a traumatic experience like this, there is a mind shift, there's a soul shift in how you see life. How has this experience reflected how you see ministry, how you see family, and how you see life overall? Uh, you, you know what, for, for me, it, it might be a little different uh, because once again, um, this is just, for me, it's just another experience where the Lord saved my life again. Yeah. You know, I have, I have no fear of death. Um, because of all the experiences I've had. I you know, was in a near plane crash uh, here in Pittsburgh, once again, uh, surrounded by terrorists in Sudan, uh, held up a knife point in Russia, uh, shot at in Iraq. Um, you, you, know, they're, they're all, you know, all these specific things. Yeah. And it's just God saying, I've got your life in the palm of my hand. You don't need to worry about anything. Mm -hmm. And even to the point that you know, I'm like most men. I don't want to go to the doctor. Don't want to waste my time, you know. Same. And, and um, but I, I felt pushed by the Holy Spirit to go. And, mm. and that's just God saying, Tim, listen, I've got more for you to do. And as you listen to me, I'll take care of you. Wow. And, and that's the key. And once again, that's where I go back to this new heart idea mm -hmm. is that when we go back to, uh, to just saying, God, I just need your heartbeat. I need your heartbeat in mine. That, that's a funny thing. I said this to a few people. I didn't, I didn't realize how bad my heart was. Mm. And, and now that, that it's fixed, I can actually put my hand on my chest and feel my heartbeat. I couldn't do that before. Wow. I, I, I didn't realize that my heart wasn't working properly, even though I'm doing all this stuff. And now feeling my heartbeat is a weird thing. And, and the Lord just says, you know, I, I just want you to know my heartbeat that well. And so it's, so it's a point of that, you know, from that standpoint. There's, there's too much we worry about. There's too much we're concerned about. There's too much that's, that's where, you know, in, in the church of Ephesus, uh, you know, it said, you know, you, you, you don't tolerate all this stuff and that's cool. And, and I appreciate that, that you don't do that, but you forgot your first love. Mm. You forgot 
Jesus. what's important. Yeah. When you're worried about all these things, when you're freaking out about all this stuff, when you're, when you're tr- striving, when you feel driven, that's not the Holy Spirit. It, it's, it's a matter of, of knowing his heartbeat and, and uh, getting, it in, uh, getting it all in place. Yeah. Tim, I, I just want you to share something. Did you want to share anything? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, Angela, I am so sorry. You know we what? I, I, have seen you, I have seen you on this show, and you do such a good job. And here I am. I'm not letting you talk at all. And I apologize. No, you're wonderful. You're wonderful. <laughs> Listen, um, uh, I would like you to take a moment to minister to the audience about how they can position their life to be reconnected back to their first love, however the Lord okay. shares that with you. Okay. Let me just say this. I, I just want to ask you, are you worried? Are you fearful? Are you concerned about the future? I know uh, this, this election is a very uh, divisive election. I know uh, a lot of issues that, that are up, everything from transgender to immigration to, to uh, finances to the way things are going. People are worried about so many things. And Jesus made it very clear. He said, listen, don't worry. I've got this. And he does. He has your life in the palm of his hand. But the challenge is you've got to make the decision every day. I believe that's why the Apostle Paul said, I die every day, because he said, you got to make the decision every day that, God, I'm going to trust you. And sometimes it's scary to do that. Sometimes it's scary to say, God, I, I, I will trust you. But when you do, he meets you there. He's a plan and a purpose for your life. Let him fulfill that. That, that is incredible. That is incredible. I feel the presence of God with that. And I feel like God's saying something to you in yeah. this moment. You know, we just want to encourage you, as you heard Tim share his story and you've seen his divine intervention, God wants to intervene on your behalf. And just like Tim said, he's asking for your yes. He's asking for you moment over moment to submit more of your heart, more of your life for his. So today we ask you, is Jesus king of your life? Have you submitted your worries and cares? If not, there's no better moment than now. Simply ask him to come in, sit with you and give him everything. When you do that, you will find, just like Tim said, you have a new heart and it's a new day for you. God bless. On tomorrow's Hope Today, discover the key to trusting God, even when it seems like a challenge. In her new book, Tethered Trust, best-selling author Becky Harling invites us to look at one small yet life-changing verse that shows how Jesus wants us to know and trust Him. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.